Microscopes let us peer in the worlds our eyes could never see. Telescopes take us far beyond the Earth to the stars and planets of the night sky. Movie projectors throw enormous images onto screens and binoculars allow us to see the beauty of distant islands. Amazing curves of glass or plastic called lenses make all these things possible. In this video, let us take a closer look at what the lenses are and how they form images. A lens is an optical device that changes the apparent location of an object by altering or changing the path of light rays coming from the object. Light rays are refracted or bent as they enter and again as they emerge from the lens. Remember that the refraction of light rays happens whenever they travel from one medium to another with different optical densities. The lens, made of glass or plastic, is optically denser or has a higher refractive index compared to air. There are two types of lenses, convex lens and concave lens. Convex lens is thicker at the middle than it is at the edges. There are three different forms of the convex lens, double convex, planoconvex, and convex meniscus. Let us visualize the effect of the convex lens on light rays. When the light ray coming from the object hits the air and lens interface, with the lens having a higher refractive index than the air and causing the decrease of the speed of the light ray, the light ray bends towards the normal. Let us draw the normal line and the light ray that is refracted towards it. As it emerges from the lens air interface, the speed of the light ray increases. It bends away from the normal. Again, let us draw the normal line and the light ray that is refracted away from it. The same thing happens to the other parallel rays that will pass through the lens. Notice that the light rays converge at one common point called the focus or focal point. That is why the convex lens is called a converging lens. On the other hand, the concave lens is thinner at the middle than it is at the edges. The three forms of the concave lens are the double concave, plano concave, and convexo concave. Like in the convex lens, the light ray incident to the concave lens bends towards the normal as it passes through it, and then bends away from the normal as it emerges from the lens. The same thing can be observed in the other light rays that pass through the concave lens. But what can you notice on the bending of the light rays? These bendings cause the light rays to diverge, traveling directly away from an imaginary focal point or focus. Because of this effect of the concave lens on the light rays, this lens is also called a diverging lens. Let us consider the convex lens as a small part of the two spheres that intersect, and the concave lens with the imaginary spheres on both sides. The center of curvature is the point in the center of the imaginary sphere from which the lens is cut. The convex and concave lenses have two centers of curvature unless they are of plano type. The center point of the lens is called the optical center. Any ray of light passing through the optical center does not noticeably refract. The imaginary line joining the centers of curvature on both sides of the lens is called the principal axis. The distance from the optical center of the lens to the center of curvature is known as the radius of curvature. The focal point or principal focus for the converging lens is the point at which the rays parallel to the principal axis converge. For the concave lens, it is the point from which such rays appear to meet. The distance between the focus and the optical center is called the focal length of the lens. The focal length of the lens depends on its curvature. A light ray passing through a thick lens is refracted more compared to the light ray passing through a thin lens, which undergoes less refraction. The parallel rays that are incident to the thick lens are converged at a shorter distance. 
while the same kind of rays that pass through a thin lens converge at a longer distance. Thus, the thick lens has a shorter focal length than the thin lens. The images formed in lenses can be constructed using ray diagrams. Similar to spherical mirrors, there are also rules to follow for image formation by concave and convex lenses ray diagrams. Consider the following rules for image formation by convex lens. Rule 1. The light ray parallel to the principal axis passes through the focal point after refraction by the convex lens. Rule 2. The light ray passing through the optical center of the convex lens travels straight on without being deviated or refracted. Rule 3. The light ray passing through the focal point becomes parallel to the principal axis after refraction by the convex lens. Notice that Rule 3 is just the opposite of Rule 1. To simplify the ray diagrams, just consider two rules in determining the properties of the image formed in the convex lens. The type of image formed by the convex lens depends on the position of the image. The rays of light that pass through the transparent convex lens are assumed to meet on the other side of the lens to form an image. Therefore, the image is said to be real if it is formed on the side of the lens opposite the object. Real images are inverted. The virtual image is formed on the same side as the lens where the object is located. Virtual images are upright. The image formation by convex lens. Start the ray diagrams by drawing a horizontal line that represents the principal axis. Then draw the convex lens and mark its optical center. Measure 2.5 cm from the optical center of the lens. Mark this point as F. Next, measure a 2.5 cm distance from F and mark it to F. Do the same on the other side of the lens. But mark the first point from the lens F prime and the second point as 2F prime. There are six cases to be considered for the image formation by the convex lens. Let us determine the properties of the image for every case. For case 1, the object is located at infinity. When an object is at infinity, the light rays coming from the object parallel to the principal axis get refracted as they pass through the convex lens and converge the focus on the other side of the lens. Note that the point where the light rays meet is the position of the image. Thus, for the object that is located at infinity, the real image is formed at the focus, or the F prime, on the other side of the lens. The size of the image is much smaller than that of the object, or highly diminished. And since the image is real, it is inverted. In case 2, the object is placed outside 2F. Let us use an arrow as our object. Let us use rule 1 for the first ray. The light ray coming from the top of the object and is moving parallel to the principal axis. This ray passes through the focal point or F prime after refraction by the convex lens. Consider rule 2 for the second ray. The light ray coming from the same point of the object passes through the optical center and goes straight without any deviation. These two refracted rays intersect at a point between F prime and 2F prime. Draw the top of the image at this point of intersection of the two light rays. Then extend the image to the principal axis. When the object is placed outside 2F, the image is formed between F prime and 2F prime, is smaller than the object or diminished real and inverted. In case 3, the object is placed at 2F or the center of curvature of the lens. Rule 1 can be used for the first light ray and rule 2 for the second light ray. Both the refracted rays intersect at 2F prime on the other side of the lens. Therefore, when the object is placed at 2F, the image is formed at 2F prime. 
And since the distance of the image is the same as the distance of the object from the lens, the image is the same as the size of the object, real and inverted. For case 4, the object is located between F and 2F. Let us follow rule 1 for the first light ray. The light ray that is parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus or F prime on the other side of the lens after refraction by the convex lens. The second ray is the light ray that passes through the optical center without any deviation. Notice that the two rays meet outside 2F prime. Thus, when the object is located between F and 2F, the image is formed outside 2F prime on the other side of the lens magnified, real, and inverted. In case 5 where the object is placed at F, let us use rules 1 and 2 for the first and second light rays respectively. Notice that both the refracted rays are parallel to each other. Hence, the image will be formed at infinity. So when the object is placed at the focus or F, the image is formed at infinity, highly magnified, real and inverted. In case 6, the object is very close to the lens. The object is placed between F and the optical center of the lens. The first ray is the light ray parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focus or F prime on the other side of the lens. While the second ray passes through the optical center unrefracted. What can you notice on the two light rays? The two rays are diverging away from one another and will not intersect to form an image on the other side of the lens. Notice that if you extend the two rays on the left side of the convex lens where the object is located, the two rays appear to intersect at a certain point. Let us draw the top of the image on this point of intersection, then extend the image to the principal axis. Therefore, when the object is placed very close to the lens, or it is placed between the focus and the optical center of the convex lens, the image is formed on the same side as the lens, highly magnified, and since it is formed on the side where the object is located, the image is virtual and upright. Now try to analyze the six cases. What can you infer about the formation of images by the convex lens? Case 1 is the opposite of case 5. When the object is at infinity, a highly diminished image is formed at the focus. But, when the object is placed at the focus, a highly magnified image is formed at infinity. Case 2 is the opposite of case 4. When the object is placed outside 2F, the image is formed between F' prime and 2F'. Prime. On the other hand, when the object is placed between F and 2F, the image is formed outside 2F prime. Interestingly, the convex lens can form a diminished or magnified image of an object depending on the position of the object from the convex lens. The convex lens can only form a virtual image if the object is placed very close to the lens, that is when it is placed between the focus and the optical center of the convex lens. As the object moves closer to the convex lens, the image location moves further away from the lens, and the image size grows or becomes magnified. This is true for cases 1 to 5. What are some common uses of the convex lens? Because the convex lens can be used in transmitting and focusing the light rays to form magnified or diminished images, and real or virtual images, this type of lens is used in magnifying lenses, eyeglasses, cameras, microscopes, projectors, telescopes, and binoculars. For ray diagrams for the concave lens, take note of the following rules. Rule 1. The ray of light parallel to the principal axis of the concave lens appears to be coming from the focus after refraction through the lens. Rule 2. The ray of light passing through the optical center of the concave lens goes straight after refraction through the lens. 
And for rule 3, the ray of light going towards the focus on the other side of the concave lens becomes parallel to the principal axis after refraction through the lens. The real and inverted image is formed on the side of the lens opposite the object, while the virtual and upright image is formed on the same side as the lens. Similar to the convex lens, start the ray diagrams for the concave lens by drawing the principal axis and the concave lens. Mark the optical center of the lens. Measure 2.5 cm from the optical center and mark it as F or the focus. Then from the focus, measure 2.5 cm distance and mark it as 2F. Do the same to the other side of the lens. Mark the first point from the optical center as F prime and the second point as 2F prime. Let us determine the properties of the image that can be formed by the concave lens when the object is placed at a certain distance from the lens. The first light ray follows rule 1. The light ray coming from the top of the object is moving parallel to the principal axis and get refracted as it passes through the concave lens. The refracted ray appears to be coming from the focus or F. The second light ray follows rule 2. The light ray coming from the same point of the object goes straight through the optical center without any deviation or refraction. The ray diagrams show that the two rays intersect on the side of the lens where the object is located. Let us draw the top of the image on the point of intersection. Then extend the drawing of the image to the principal axis. The diagram shows that the image is formed at the same side of the lens, diminished, virtual, and upright. This time, let us place the object closer to the lens. The object is located between the focus and the optical center of the lens. Let us use rule 1 and rule 2 for rays 1 and 2 respectively. Where is the image formed? Is it magnified or diminished? Is the image real and inverted or virtual and upright? When the object is placed very close to the lens, the image is formed at the same side of the lens, diminished, virtual, and upright. What conclusion can you make about the image formation by the concave lens? Right. In the concave lens, the image is always formed at the same side of the lens, diminished, virtual, and upright. Can you give some common uses of the concave lenses? The concave lenses are most commonly used in eyeglasses to correct myopia, which is also called nearsightedness. Small concave lenses are also used in lasers. To improve the quality of photographs, Combinations of convex and concave lenses are widely used by camera manufacturers. When only a convex lens is used as the primary lens of a camera, it causes distortions in the photos, which is called chromatic aberrations. Combining both concave and convex lenses eliminated the undesirable effects. Concave lenses are also used in flashlights to magnify the light produced by the source. Peepholes or door viewers are security devices that give a panoramic view of objects outside walls or doors. A concave lens is used to minimize the proportions of the objects and gives a wider view of the object or area. Don't forget to like this video, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel to be updated on related videos. Thank you!